Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching one of my favorite movies, Black Panther, to see how accurate the science and engineering scenes in the movie really are. Ryan Coogler did an amazing, amazing job with this movie. I think this is one of the best movies Marvel has ever done. It's one of my favorite movies just in general, and there's so much going on. Uh, we're not going to waste any more time, let's just get right into this. This is a really, really cool opening scene to this movie. The plane that they're flying is directly above the convoy of cars that they are currently following. It's very, very possible to say that they're able to image each of the cars individually and identify how many people are in each vehicle, as well as their positions inside of them. I wouldn't consider that a hologram of what he was just picking up because you can interact with it. Holograms you actually can't interact with, they're just uh, playing out a projection. This is the hard part about this is right, when he picks up that truck and like brushes off the top, I don't know how that is still maintaining its structural integrity. Like just imaging something, looking at like a 2D screen, that seems to be more effective than what he just did. Like there's no real advancement in the technology to actually pick something up and move it with your hands. Like you can do the same thing from a like 2D screen and a mouse and a computer that we have today. So I don't, I don't know, it looks really cool, but there's really no reason to have that. I never freeze. What's going on? It's the car. The last part. What's that? The car not start. What happened? The engine's there. So essentially what we're looking at here are like Kimoyo bees that are acting as EMPs in a sense. Now, an EMP it stands for elect electromagnetic pulse. And those are high powered radio waves. We don't actually see that happening here, but pretty much the implication is that like those beads fell on the hood of the car and that disabled the engine and all of the uh, electronic components of it. However, throwing one of those on the hood of a car isn't actually going to do anything. I mean, your car can get struck by lightning and you will be completely safe and unharmed. There's nothing connecting like the metal of the hood of the car to the engine itself. Like any sort of electricity or current that goes right to that is going to go straight to ground. So you can't connect like that metal of the hood with the actual uh, computer in the car itself. And what are these? The real question is, what are those? <laughs> Why do you have your toes out in my lap? But you don't like my royal sandals. I wanted to go old school for my first day. Yeah. No, the, the royal sandals are a safety hazard and you're not allowed to wear uh, any sort of like open-toed shoes or um, like baggy clothes or shorts. You can't wear any of that stuff in a lab. And the reason that you have these sort of regulations on what you can and can't wear inside of a lab is because if some chemical was to spill on you, better on your shoe than your skin. For the same reason you wear safety goggles, if something was to like fizz up and if it hits your eye, uh, good luck fixing that. It'll be really painful and I hope no one has to go through that. In fact, Shuri has a, a mesh top and sleeveless, so that's not supposed to be worn in a lab either. The researchers in the background actually are the only ones who care about lab safety here because they have safety goggles on, they have lab coats on, some of them are wearing gloves. In fact, uh, T'Challa and Shuri are probably the, like, the, the people who own this thing and run this whole lab, they are the ones who are the least safe <laughs> in this whole room. I'll tell it to go on. The entire suit sits within the teeth of the necklace. I think the most impressive part about that is that now that the whole suit is compressed in the necklace because um, materials like cotton can be compressed very, very finely, but the cool part here is that the suit is form-fitting to whoever wears it. Because of that, like it doesn't matter who has that necklace on, it just goes over 
like whatever that person is that is something I don't think we have yet and if we do I'm not aware of it but like to compress that much material of like cotton polyester or what I mean vibranium like whatever is actually in the suit into just like the beads of the necklace uh, that can be done right now but it's not gonna like it's not gonna be form-fitting to whoever wears it the first time I watched this movie and I saw that my immediate thought was like why don't they just give that to Hulk because they have multiple like necklaces so why don't you just put one on Hulk and then let him you know like just be who he is with the Black Panther suit that would be pretty insane strike it Anyway. Mm-hmm. Not that hard, genius! You told me to strike it. You didn't say how hard. I invite you to my lab, and you just kick things around. Well, maybe you should eh? make it a little stronger. Hey, wait a minute. The nanites absorb the kinetic energy and hold it in place for redistribution. That is basically how a spring works. Now, kinetic energy is just energy that you have when an object is in motion. The equation for it is kinetic energy, which is Ke, equals one-half mv squared, which is half of the mass of the object multiplied by its squared velocity. Imagine that you take a spring, where like this end of the spring is against a wall, and then this end of the spring is just like hanging off the wall. If you hit this end and you compress it that much, all of that compressed energy in the spring is a, exactly equivalent to the kinetic energy that you just hit it with while it was uncompressed. And when you hold a spring like this, the moment you let go of it, it just like winds back into place. And this is how the kinetic energy is released. Now, I'm not saying that there's a bunch of vibranium springs inside the Black Panther suit. I can't really explain vibranium because it's not real, but the principle that she just described is kinetic energy being transferred stored and then released later. That's exactly what a spring does. Very nice. Strike it again in the same spot. You're recording. For research purposes. Delete that footage. When T'Challa kicks it and he's sent flying back, all the kinetic energy that he had originally kicked and put in the suit is flying back towards him now. This is the part that I don't quite understand about this scene, is that when T'Challa kicks the suit the first time, right, he's storing, let's just say, 10 joules of energy within the suit itself. Now he's kicking it again the same way with the same amount of force, right? So there's 10 joules of energy stored in the suit and he's kicking it with the same 10 joules. So those two just cancel each other out and he wouldn't fly backwards. Now, if a bullet was to shoot him while he was in the Black Panther suit, the kinetic energy from that bullet is way higher than anyone's punches or kicks because the bullet has a much higher velocity. So let's say the bullet was to shoot someone like right, right here in the chest in the Black Panther suit. If someone was to punch that spot again, all that stored kinetic energy from the bullet would be sent back at them and they would just go flying, like I don't know how far. But if you were to kick the suit in the same spot with the same amount of force, nothing would happen to you because there would be 10 joules of energy coming back at you and you would be kicking 10 joules of energy back at the suit. Both of those 10 would just cancel out to zero. Do we just leave him? He'll catch up. Remote driving system activated. Wait, which side of the road is it? For bus sake, just drive. Okay, calm down. The thing about this scene that, like, I already went over that if you throw the Camellia bead on the hood of the car, that's not gonna do anything. Like, if you send any sort of current through that, it'll just go straight to ground. It won't actually get to the computer part of the vehicle. But really, the question here is, like, can you hack a car? And the answer is yes, you can hack you can hack any sort of electronic device with a computer if you're on the same Wi-Fi network. And um, it has been attempted and it was successful. People actually hacking into cars and controlling their engines and moving the cars and you can turn the engine off. The chances of that happening are just so low. <laughs> I mean, because it's not like 
you have like credit card information or anything important stored in the computer of your car, right? Like there's no real incentive that a hacker has to get into your car other than to just mess with you. Like there's nothing for them to really gain from that. That is really cool that the trains in Wakanda run on maglev technology. We have trains like this all over the world now. <laughs> Basically maglev means that this train is run by magnets and it's actually levitating over the train tracks and that's what makes it go super fast. I think it's called the bullet train. I don't know what the actual name for it is but I, I remember like, it, like we call it the bullet train in Japan and that thing can fly like 200 miles an hour. And they have, I think there's now a bullet train in China that runs on maglev technology, just like they were shown here, that can go even more than 200 miles an hour. I think it gets close to like 400 miles an hour now. That's the kind of strange part, is that the trains that we have today that you can ride on in like Japan and China and uh, Germany that are the maglev technology trains, they're faster than the train shown in Black Panther, which I thought was kind of strange. Like, vibranium seems like it would be a much more powerful metal than the magnets that we're using on these bullet trains. Or the train uh, in, in Wakanda is just miles and miles long because if you've ever seen an object move at 200 miles an hour, it is ridiculously fast. I mean, you will blink and probably miss it. And so the fact that it's like just going, zooming by them, they can still see each other, that's either a really, really long train or it's not moving as fast as it could. Holy crap, what an awesome movie. Um, I, I get chills every time I watch it. Like, it's just so cool to watch them, like, play out that whole story and, like, Wakanda. Like, this is an amazing movie. Like, Ryan Coogler, you did incredible, man. Like, keep this up. The rules that were set for Vibranium in this movie were not broken to my knowledge. Like I did not see any loopholes that they said Vibranium could do this and that or it couldn't do this and it was like out of... I don't think that they violated the rules that they set. Hope you guys enjoyed my commentary as much as I enjoyed watching the movie. If there's anything else that you want me to watch or if there's something that I missed, go ahead and throw in the comments. I read them all and I talk to everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Stay fresh. Stay golden.